the key statement, which I repeated a few times, was knowledge is structured in consciousness. But then generally we are conscious of something. That means we don't have pure consciousness. And then our consciousness is limited and our thoughts are limited. But if we go deep in ourself, if we sink to a deeper level, we may come to an area where we realize there are no thoughts anymore. There may be in the beginning still something like intuition, some impulses, but if you go beyond those, you come to a level where you are conscious of some of nothing, but you are aware. You are in total silence and awareness, and that's a combination of um, uh, psychophysiological state, which is neither waking nor dreaming nor sleeping. It's a fourth state of consciousness, and in that state, your awareness opens up to infinity, and there you find everything. That is actually the the basis of all creation, and you may experience that instead of a theoretical postulate. You may experience that in yourself when you witness the creation of a thought that something comes up from the unmanifest and becomes manifest as a faint impulse first and as a more clearer thought, clearer, clearer, very manifest thought with which you then can start to act and for example build a pyramid. As far as the uh, first part of your presentation uh, where you talked about the uh, orthodoxy versus the, uh, if you can give us the main points about that, that would be great. The difficulty here is that this level of consciousness cannot be forced in. You have to experience it. And usually by means like meditation and similar approaches. And this is lacking in modern science everywhere. Whatever field it is, it's lacking. And that's why everyone, even the most learned professor, is limited in his consciousness and on that basis sees his work as the greatest and it's all-encompassing already, nothing new can be found. And on that, ba that basis they tend to become dogmatic. They tend to say, I know it anyway, I know it already, I know it better than anybody else and there is nothing new to discover. However, there is, as we can see here in the Bosnian pyramids. And then these <laughs> the outsiders is the wrong word, the insiders actually, the academic insiders tend to defend their position by very dogmatic statements, simply saying there are no pyramids in Bosnia, as one example. They're, because there cannot be. They didn't know it, so how can they be there? And they just deny it, and they don't have the courage, that is another point of the dogmatism, they don't have the courage to come and see for themselves to perhaps be surprised, shocked, enlightened, to see, yes, there is something. Oh, I was wrong. I was limited. Let me learn something new. This attitude is missing. And that's a pity, because that will halt scientific research and will really jam the whole progress. And this is what we cannot afford. In all areas of science, we have to be open. We have to be open to new ideas, new findings, new considerations. Even if they prove wrong in the end, that doesn't matter. That is the, the way science progresses. You are allowed to make mistakes, but you're not allowed to become dogmatic and say this is the end of knowledge. There is no end to learning. There may be an end to unlearning. That's all right. That's what my teacher says, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. An end to unlearning, very well, wonderful. When you have unlearned everything, then you're on the doorstep to enlightenment, then you really can learn, because then you learn to be in yourself, you learn to be in that field of all possibilities, and you are so open and so receptive to new ideas that dogmas can't come up anymore. But you can kind of renew each branch of science. Just like that, just like with the joy of discovering something new, and to share also. You would like to share your results, and I mean, that's the joy in, in science, which I experience also always. When you talk to colleagues who are non-dogmatic, they're always willing to help you. And they spend their own time on your project just to help you over some hurdle which you can't handle. And this is how science should progress, that we support each other and grow and grow and grow.
Tycho death. Is there any specific uh, orthodox position toward the Bosnian pyramids or any specific group that's sort of actively working against uh, new um, ideas here in Bosnia? From what I heard, and it seems I can't believe that, there has been a letter of the president of the European Association of Archaeologists sent out to uh, the heads of the national organizations of archaeologists saying those who start to cooperate here in that research in the valley and Bosnian Valley of pyramids, they will not get a job in the established archaeological world. And I think that's the most dogmatic verdict that can be uttered at, at all times. I mean, the research here is broad-based and it has found recognition in open minds. And if the closed minds, they, can, they think they can stop their progress, they will be stopped. They will be lo the losers. So they shoot themselves in the leg and it will not be of any, any value in the future. So I don't know it personally because I'm not an archaeologist. But that's what I've heard and what I've experienced in Dr. Osmanovic's uh, seminar in Frankfurt in February. What I've heard in Dr. Osmanovic's um, seminar in Frankfurt in February in 2000, uh, 20, 2000 yes, 11, um, was interesting. There was not a single representative of German archaeology, academic archaeology. Nobody was there. And I think this is a shame to the profession and to science and to the country also. So it's not just that the orthodoxy is coming out to attack the new uh, ideas here in Bosnia, but that they just want to use the sin of omission or the ig ignoring of the, of the new uh, discoveries here, sort of a two-pronged method. Yeah, they don't want this let's say carefully, possibility of a huge new discovery to leak out. Because more people could start to think for themselves and could realize that they're being fooled by their otherwise accepted academic leaders. What's the solution? Broad consciousness would be the way out so that everyone can see where well, there's so much more to know everywhere all around then that may also apply to my field and then they may come become more open to a, a proposition or oh, there are some pyramids in Bosnia and they may say well perhaps I should go and see for myself I don't believe it but who knows perhaps there is something